So do you have trouble in the first 30 seconds to around five minutes of conversation? Do you get stuck? Do you not know what to say? Do you get all bound up? Well, if that's you, then this video is definitely for you. But before I get started, I want to invite you to like, subscribe and share and definitely comment in the video if you get some value. I'd love to hear those comments. Now, let's get started. That first 30 seconds to five minutes of conversation, you walk up to a beautiful woman. You want to start a conversation and you just don't know what to say. You go blank. Maybe you're in a party situation with a ton of people you want to get to know. Maybe it's a business situation. Maybe it's just meeting new friends. Whatever it is, that first 30 seconds to five minutes of conversation can be some of the toughest for so many people in this world. Me, I used to be the same way. I was terrified to start conversations. I'd go out and I would try and I would shake and I would sweat. And well, that's largely why I got into this business because I was so terrified and so afraid that by the time I got over it, I felt like this is something that I want to help other people learn about. I remember one time specifically, I went out, I was in Long Beach, California. And I went out just to ask people simple questions. I was going to ask them the time. I was going to ask them directions and just start as many conversations as I could that day. Not just with beautiful women, but with anybody. And I remember standing there by the beach in Long Beach. And I looked over and I saw this guy standing there. He was a bigger guy. He had a big, nice watch on. And I thought, I'm going to go over and ask him the time. And there's just a part of me that couldn't do it. I stood there for like five minutes trying to get up the nerve to walk over and ask him the time. Now, I had already asked people the time in the past. I couldn't understand why I couldn't do it. And uh, and I had to really take a deep look at myself. What is keeping me from asking this person the time? Well, it turned out I was such a nice guy. I had such a strong nice guy syndrome, which I have a lot of videos about on this channel, that asking him the time made me feel like I was manipulating and lying to him because I already knew the time. I was just looking for a reason to start the conversation. I felt like a bad person for doing it. And that's after I realized that, I really began to realize that, wow, I really have a problem here. I just don't know how to relax and flow with people. So I made it one of my missions in life to really get good at flowing, relaxing, communicating with people. And that's how I ended up where I'm at today. Now, if that's you, then we're going to go into a specific technique that I've developed to help so many clients get over this. And I wish I knew this technique back then because it took me a while to really figure this out. For a long time, I would force myself up to walk up to people. I would force myself shaking to say hi, ask simple questions. And honestly, even though the questions were pretty normal that I asked, were pretty simple, were pretty open, a lot of people still reacted weird to me. Um, and that had a lot to do with who I was being. The anxiety running through my body, the fear, the nervousness being in my head caused a lot of people to pull away from me, to reject me, to pull back. I didn't understand that at the time. I began to think there was something wrong with me because I felt like so many people didn't want to talk to me. And that might be you. I don't know if you're going through that. If you are, definitely comment in the video. But in reality, they're reacting to who you're being and not you. The energy you're running at that time. I mean, think about it. When you're hanging out with your best friend, when you're hanging out with somebody you're very comfortable with, you probably flow a lot more. If you don't flow completely, you probably relax and just let the words come. You don't think about them. You don't analyze them. That's what we're talking about. And when I realize what really makes somebody good at something, it's not thinking more, it's thinking less. It's flowing more. You see, in flow state, we actually think less and we just allow our bodies to move and flow. And you can see this in athletics, you can see this in art, you can see this in writing. When, when you're really hitting the zone, that's another version of flow state, you just begin to flow. Well, I realized that's what had to happen ultimately in conversation. And this whole idea that I got that was totally wrong of having all kinds of things memorized to say and uh, little notes written in my back pocket of what to say and who to be was just making things worse. It was something I was resistant to in the first place, but I did it anyways because I thought I needed it to grow. And all it did was make me more analytical, got me more in my head, got me more stuck, got me more frustrated. And I realized I needed to come up with something different. I needed to come up with something that worked for me. And what turned out was this worked for so many other clients. Matter of fact, when I first came up with it, it was an idea I got for a client that just couldn't start conversations. 
he couldn't seem to go out there and he did just didn't know what to say. Like he would start a conversation, he'd fumble over his words, he'd go blank, he'd stare at people and it was just awkward and weird. And I was sitting there with him one day and I was working with him all day one day and I thought to myself, I'm just going to get this guy to flow. I'm just going to get him to talk and stop thinking because that's his biggest problem. He's thinking way too much. So this is step number one of the solution to this is you got to begin to flow. So I put him on a timer and I said, for the next 10 minutes, I don't want you to stop talking. I want you to just talk about everything you see. Now, this may sound counterintuitive because when people, when guys talk too much, they're annoying, right? So if you're an over talker, there's a way this works for you too. And I'm going to explain it. You're going to understand the second phase of this when we get to it. So let's, let's get to the first phase first to get you to being that over talker a little bit. And then we're going to, we're going to tune it up. So I just got him to flow for 10 minutes straight. Talk about anything you want. Talk about that billboard, but don't stop. Talk about that coffee cup over there, but don't stop. Talk about that TV over there, but don't stop. As we're walking down the street, I just point things out. Talk about that. Talk about that. And his job was to flow and let whatever comes out of him come out of him. And so what would commonly happen with a lot of people that I've done this to over the years, including him, starting with him, is they want to blank at first. They just, uh, 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 and you see this kind of stutter in their brain. And I'd say, go, go, go. I say, I don't care if you have to say the same word over and over again, just keep talking. Train yourself not to talk and train yourself not to care what people think of you. So number one, train yourself not to talk. Number two, train yourself not to care what comes out of your mouth or what people think of you. And this is only the first stage. We're going to get to stage two, which is going to clean a lot of this up in a minute. So what would literally happen is they would go, uh, 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 and I'd say, say anything. And they'd say, say anything, say anything. I don't know what to say. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, billboard. That's a blue billboard. It's really interesting. And they just start rushing and racing. So the first thing that happens is they start a beautiful ramble. They just learn to ramble. So I get them out of the pauses. I get them out of the freezing and I get them into a ramble. And uh, we're walking down the street. Oh, look at that dog. I used to have a German shepherd like that. That dog is beautiful. Oh, I, I want to go over and say hi to her. They might go over, talk to her for a minute about the dog, then continue on down the road. And I'm like, continue to talk. Well, this went from 10 minutes into about four hours of him talking about stuff. And he started to get more creative, more playful, you know, he would say, oh, my God, it's beautiful weather out. Look at this weather. I love it. Oh, it's so awesome. And then he would drop down and he'd say, yeah, but, you know, I do miss the winter. I love it when I, when you ski. Skiing is so awesome. But you know what? I'm going to enjoy the sun while it's out. You know, little things like this. He just stuff would start coming out of him. It was a little bit of a ramble, a little bit of a race. And he might say, Again, the same word over and over again, word, word, word. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say, but he just didn't stop talking. Now, what you're doing in this phase is you're training the brain to surrender and let what's in your head come out. And one of the things I would tell them is if they don't know what to say, sing a song, uh, rap a song, say a nursery rhyme. Mary had a little lamb, which fleece was white as snow. I don't know what to say right now. Um, I'm going to talk about my shirt, you know, until their mind settles down. Because what's happening is the mind is racing and then it's resisting. It's then fight, flight and freeze. And it's, and it's going between these different things to try to stop itself. And so what we're doing is we're fighting the mind right now. And the reason I took him through about four hours or hours of it that first day was because I had one day to work with him and I wanted to get him through this. And at the end of that day, but honestly, he was a machine gun. It was amazing to watch how much it changed his life. Matter of fact, at work, he became uh, one of the most outgoing, most popular guys at his office. He said the next day, he said, I just went in and I was cracking jokes with everybody. It was amazing. So the brain has to relax. And once the brain relaxes and you can flow, something interesting starts to happen. Just like in sports, at first you can't think when you're learning a new sport, pretty soon you start to feel. You start to feel your body more. You start to relax more. Words are coming out of your mouth. You're not thinking and suddenly you can feel your heart more. Interesting, I'm gonna talk for my heart more. What is my heart feeling? Oh, it feels a little warm. It feels a little tingly, you know? When I look at that, wow, I can feel that with my heart. I can feel that because you're you're not thinking as much. This is the embodiment piece. The next thing you know, you feel your stomach more and you just start paying attention to how different parts of your body feel when you speak. You start becoming aware of the integration of the body with the thing you're talking about. And that's what you want to get to. You know what? There's some beautiful red flowers over here. And when I look at it, it just makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Oh, and then my coffee's right there. And I talked about that earlier and 
I don't know if any of you know some of my videos. I love coffee. I always have coffee with me. Um, I'm sitting at my dad's house right now and it's absolutely amazing to see my dad. I haven't seen him in a long time. He's getting up there in years and I miss him to death. And I just really wanted to be with this side of my family. And I can really feel that in my stomach. I can feel that in my heart. And then if I talk about um, this girl I like, you know, as I, I'm thinking about her right now. And as I do, I drop down into my turn on. I feel my hips a little bit. And yeah, because she's a sexy lady. And, and as I roll through and just continue to talk about this stuff, I'm starting to learn to tune in to what I'm feeling when I'm talking, which pulls me out of the ramble, pulls me out of it and starts to allow me to flow. And I can start to say, you know, I really want you guys to get this. Oh, and then I could feel it from my heart. I really want you to get this. I really want you to understand what's going on. So think about this. The first step is to get past worrying about what you're saying. You have to do it so much. I don't care if it's an hour a day, 30 minutes a day to reach a point where you can just ramble at will. The second step is to learn to connect it to feeling in your body, your heart, your gut, your, your legs, the ground beneath you, feeling your body's relationship to the words while feeling the environment around you. That's stage two. Then stage three is learning to pause and listen. And by the way, I've taught this to so many people, I've said it before and it's changed their lives. But in stage three, you start learning to say, wow, you know, I really think that flower is beautiful. And then you just sit in the beauty of that flower for like five, 10 seconds and enjoy it. That flower is so beautiful. And you just take it in with your heart for a second. Or you know what, I love my coffee and I can't wait to get more. And you take that in for a second. So you're learning to work the pauses now. So when you're in conversation for real, you're walking around, you're like, hi. And there's a momentary pause. What's your name? And curiosity comes to your eyes before you even say anything else. What's your name? Where are you from? Interesting. And what happens is when you get in touch with the real emotions in your body and you learn to work those emotions in the pause and ask real questions because you're no longer locked up in the mind, you begin to connect with people at a much, much deeper level. They feel your genuine interest in them and they want to they want to share with you. They want to give you more of themselves. And I think this is a really valuable, powerful insight if you get it, that when people want to connect with you, they want to connect with you because you are feeling real emotion in the core of your body and you're letting them experience it with you. And you're letting them see it. Curiosity, appreciation, joy, even anger and sadness. Wow. And that made me really sad and um, interesting. And the key with sadness or the, the heavier emotions is you just want to own them. You don't want to try to throw them on the other person to fix. You just want to own them. Yeah, I can handle the sadness. That's kind of the, the feeling. Yeah, that made me sad. Or boy, that, that pissed me off. You know, fuck that shit. And you just own it. And when people begin to feel you relating to them by feeling their own emotion and you set your mind free and you're no longer worrying about what they say, then the first 30 seconds to let's say five minutes conversation becomes so much easier. Now, I give this assignment to a lot of people. A lot of people think, oh, I could, just in the last few days, I've given it to a lot of people. And there are people that have literally said to me, yeah, I practiced it with friends. I just rambled with friends. Did I, And I ask them, did did you know, did they know you were practicing? Were they listening to you say one word over and over, go all over the place, sing random songs, push your boundaries of your comfort level of what you say? Well, no. Well, then you didn't really practice. So there's one of two ways you practice. You either practice alone by yourself where you really get it down. You learn to jump from song to song, move over here, say stupid stuff, stuff that embarrasses you, stuff that pushes your boundaries. Then you practice with friends that know you're practicing and encourage you. Come on, don't stop. You know, say the one word over and over, sing a song, do what you need to do, talk about that, talk about that. And you go back and forth working with each other until you can go totally free and you don't give a fuck what anybody's thinking of you. Then you go out with that friend and you practice walking down the street doing it around people in crowds, sitting in a bar, just ramble back and forth, get used to being seen doing it. And then you start to learn to set yourself free. When you practice it that way, because I had a client in the, in the last week that did practice it that way. He practiced it just in his car, rambling like crazy, going to work and home. And when he got home, his girlfriend was like, oh my God, this, he was just a machine. He said, it felt like I had one or two drinks. 
And when I have one or two drinks, I cut loose and I open up and I speak a lot, but I didn't have any drinks. And she asked me if I had anything to drink. And I said, no, I just felt really good. And I became really social that night. He just needed a little bit to set him free. For some of you, that have been bound up in this conversational area for many years of your life, then you might need more. You might need several weeks of this, you know, doing it for like 30 minutes, an hour a day, but trust me, it can change your life. And if you do it as prescribed, you work the three levels. The first level is get past the ramble till you can feel. Then learn, number two is learning to feel and express and flow with that. Like, like you're playing a musical instrument. You're working on creating rhythm and timing. So you feel like you're almost singing a song, creating an instrument. You're, you're creating music with your body, with the way you speak and the tones. And then number three is you're learning to work the pauses. You're learning to be more still inside. You're learning to ask questions. When you really master all that and you work it consciously and don't think that just doing it in the background of your mind is going to do it, you got to say it out loud. It can radically change your life. It can have a huge effect on your conversation skills. And I really have to sometimes push people to do this exercise for some reason. They resist, they resist, they resist. And I want to invite you into this idea that you can commit right here in the comments and say, I'm not going to resist no matter how good or bad I am at this. I'm going to do this for at least a week or two, a couple of weeks to really see what comes out of me because the people that do do it, I often see huge changes in their ability to communicate, speak, flow in conversations. It builds their confidence at an insane level. So if you're ready for this kind of change, then I invite you to get started to do that commitment. And I also want to invite you to put a comment in this video and let me know what you think of this and good or bad. Or if you tried it, I especially would love to see you come back and put a comment in after you've done it. And now if you're enjoying this video and you want more good content, definitely check out last week's video. Last week's video was really important content on um, the three stages of how to become good at anything. And those three stages are really important. I've been teaching them to a lot of people lately, and it's really helping people grow on an immense level. So get these communication skills down, learn about those three stages and learn to make you the best version of yourself, the happiest version, the most powerful version. Learn to wake up ready to seize the day. And uh, with that said, remember to like, subscribe and share. And again, remember to comment and uh, oh yeah, definitely share. I want to remind you again, those shares are really helping us because we're not getting marketed by the algorithm really well. As you guys can see by the view count, it just doesn't get out to new people. So I really appreciate every share. And now with that said, remember only the confident really live. See you in the next video.